Obstructive lung diseases are a group of respiratory conditions characterized by airway obstruction, which hampers the ability of air to flow freely in and out of the lungs. These diseases are often associated with chronic inflammation, leading to narrowing of the airways, excessive mucus production, and respiratory symptoms such as wheezing, shortness of breath, and chronic cough. With the increasing global burden of these conditions, understanding their pathophysiology, risk factors, and management strategies is critical, which is what we're going to discuss in this video. So if you're ready, let's get into it. First and foremost, let's talk about CBAP. CBABE serves as a mnemonic designed to make it easier to memorize the primary types of obstructive lung diseases. Each letter in CBABE stands for a distinct disorder as outlined below. C stands for cystic fibrosis, B for bronchiectasis, A stands for asthma, B stands for bronchitis, or in this case, chronic bronchitis, and E stands for emphysema. Therefore, by remembering CBABE, you have a handy tool to quickly identify and categorize the main diseases that fall under the obstructive lung disease umbrella. And just a reminder, obstructive lung diseases are a group of respiratory disorders characterized by airway obstruction, limiting the outflow of air from the lungs. Each of these diseases has unique causes, symptoms, and treatments, but they all involve the obstruction of airflow, leading to breathing difficulties. So now let's talk more specifically about each type. First, we have COPD, which stands for Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease, and it is a progressive respiratory disease that causes airflow blockage and breathing-related problems. It's predominantly caused by long-term exposure to irritating gases or particulate matter most often from cigarette smoke. COPD encompasses both emphysema, which involves damage to the air sacs in the lungs, and chronic bronchitis, which is characterized by inflamed bronchial tubes with excessive mucus production. Next up is asthma, which is a chronic respiratory condition where the airways become inflamed and narrowed often in response to specific triggers like allergens, cold air, or exercise. This narrowing can cause periods of wheezing, coughing, chest tightness, and shortness of breath. While it can be managed with medications and lifestyle adjustments, severe episodes known as asthma attacks can be life-threatening. Next is cystic fibrosis. This is a genetic disorder that causes thick, sticky mucus to build up in the lungs, digestive tract, and other parts of the body. This mucus clogs the airways, leading to respiratory and digestive complications. It's associated with frequent lung infections, reduced lung function, and over time, respiratory failure. Regular treatments are required to clear mucus and prevent complications. <gasps> And then we have bronchiectasis, which is a chronic condition where the bronchial tubes in the lungs become irreversibly dilated and damaged due to chronic inflammation or infection. This damage prevents the airways from effectively clearing mucus, leading to persistent cough, recurrent lung infections, and breathing difficulties. Causes can include severe lung infections, immune disorders, or conditions like cystic fibrosis. Next up is chronic bronchitis, which involves long-term inflammation to the bronchi, the major air passages to the lungs. It's characterized by a persistent cough that produces mucus for at least three months in two consecutive years. The primary cause is smoking, but prolonged exposure to air pollutants and dust can also contribute. And then we have emphysema, which involves the gradual destruction of the alveoli, which are the tiny air sacs in the lungs where oxygen exchange occurs. This destruction leads to the formation of larger, less efficient air spaces, reducing the lungs capacity to transfer oxygen into the bloodstream. The primary cause is smoking, but other factors like long-term exposure to airborne irritants can also contribute. 
emphysema is often grouped under the COPD umbrella, along with chronic bronchitis. Next, I should mention the signs and symptoms. Obstructive lung diseases, despite their distinct pathologies, often present overlapping clinical signs and symptoms. This includes the following. Dyspnea, shortness of breath, wheezing, chronic cough, chest tightness, increased mucus production, frequent respiratory infections, decreased exercise tolerance, cyanosis, digital clubbing, respiratory failure, unintended weight loss, and fatigue. The presence and severity of these symptoms can vary based on the specific type of obstructive lung disease, its stage, and individual factors, which is why early diagnosis and management can help alleviate these symptoms and improve the quality of life for affected individuals. Next, let's talk about the causes. Because obstructive lung diseases arise from various causes. COPD, which includes chronic bronchitis and emphysema, is predominantly linked to long-term smoking, but prolonged exposure to environmental pollutants, occupational dust, and chemicals can also contribute. Asthma's etiology often involves a combination of genetic predisposition and environmental factors, including allergens, respiratory infections, and certain drugs. Cystic fibrosis is caused by a genetic mutation that leads to the production of thick, sticky mucus in the lungs. Bronchiectasis can result from persistent infections, immune disorders, or be a complication of other respiratory conditions. While many causes are intrinsic or environmental, early interventions and reducing exposure to risk factors can prevent or mitigate the progression of these diseases. And that leads perfectly into the most effective treatment methods. Treatment for obstructive lung diseases aims to relieve symptoms, improve lung function, enhance the quality of life, and reduce the risk of exacerbation. This includes the following. First, it involves pharmacological interventions, such as bronchodilators, which are medications like beta agonists and anticholinergics that help relax and widen the airways, facilitating easier breathing. Corticosteroids, which can be inhaled or systemic steroids that reduce inflammation in the airways. Mucolytics which help break down and expel mucus from the lungs, and antibiotics, which are used to treat or prevent bacterial infections, especially in conditions like bronchiectasis or cystic fibrosis. And then there are the non-pharmacological interventions that include pulmonary rehabilitation, which is a comprehensive program that combines exercise training, education, and support. Oxygen therapy, which is helpful for individuals with significantly decreased oxygen levels in the blood. Airway clearance techniques, which involves methods like chest physiotherapy or devices that help in mucus clearance. Next are the surgical and procedural options, which occur more often in severe cases. This includes a lung transplant, which is considered for severe cases where medical therapy is no longer effective lung volume reduction surgery, which involves removing damaged tissue from the lungs to help them work more efficiently, and a bolectomy, which is the surgical removal of large air spaces that form in the lungs due to conditions like emphysema. And finally, we have the lifestyle and preventative measures, which includes smoking cessation, which is crucial for prevention and to halt the progression of many obstructive diseases. Vaccination, which involves annual flu shots and pneumonia vaccines to reduce the risk of respiratory infections and avoiding triggers. For asthma patients especially, identifying and avoiding allergens or irritants can prevent flare-ups. And remember, these treatment strategies are tailored based on the specific disease, its severity, and individual patient factors. Regular follow-ups with healthcare providers are vital to monitor disease progression and adjust treatment as needed. But as you can see, obstructive lung diseases pose significant challenges to global health, 
accounting for considerable morbidity and mortality worldwide. Early diagnosis, comprehensive management, and public awareness are imperative to reduce the burden of these diseases. While advancements in medical research have provided better therapeutic options and improved patient outcomes, <gasps> continued efforts are necessary to prevent disease onset, reduce exacerbations, and improve the quality of life for those affected. If you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And there should be some other helpful videos popping up on your screen right about now that I think you will enjoy. And just a quick reminder, we are not doctors. This video is for informational purposes only. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day. And as always, breathe easy, my friend.